Hello, it's me Jamie and welcome back to another video. So today I'm just going to be telling you about all the books that I read in December, so essentially just my December wrap up. I read 10 books, which I think is the most that I've read in a month all year because this year has been a bit of a nightmare. I found a new favourite for the year in December, so that's amazing, but most of the books I read are just kind of like two or three stars, so a bit of an average month in terms of what I read, but still found two new favourites. So that's excellent. So the first book I read in December, and it was a book that I read on my Kindle, it was Vicious by LJ Shen. This is a dark romance book and I rated it three stars. It wasn't bad by any means, but it just kind of was a bit average. This is a romance that spans over 10 years. We meet our two characters when they're both in high school. Vicious is the main male love interest and he basically is like super popular but also like horribly toxic really awful and bullies our female main character who is the daughter of the people that are hired to like housekeep for vicious's like mansion they have this really awful toxic like connection where they're just like obsessed with each other even though they're both even though Vicious is really, really horrible to our main character, Amelia, they're both just like very obsessed with each other. Also, this book is told through like their two points of views. So we hear both of them and they're like about their mutual obsession. Basically 10 years from when they first met, Amelia is looking after her sister with chronic illness, living in New York as a waitress. She just gets fired from her job, not the waitressing one, but her other one that she actually cares about. She gets fired and then she has a chance encounter with Vicious in a bar where she has to serve him and he is now like this big time lawyer and he's still just as ruthless as he was in high school but now he's like a lawyer so it's worse. Vicious learns that Amelia has been fired so then he hires her to be his PA and shit just goes down. They fall in love and realize that what they feel for each other is love even though it's like kind of disgusting how they treat each other and then there's also this like really huge lawsuit storyline between like Vicious and his stepmom and his dad. Honestly it all is a little convoluted and all very very like far-fetched. I'm actually struggling to remember all the different plot points but yeah I think the reason I gave it three stars is ultimately because it got me out of my reading slump which is great and put me in a reading mood which set me off for the rest of the month but I do think that like while the characters were supposed to be awful it just wasn't like super fun to read about and honestly kind of like not that memorable as a romance. I really like dark romances like the Penelope Douglas that I've read I've really liked with the exception of Credence and like there are some other like pretty toxic romances that I have read and loved but this one just kind of fell a bit flat and was kind of boring and all these different storylines it just all seemed a bit much. Also there was like the smut was like pretty boring to be honest like the sex scenes I was like Okay, like I don't know why this is hyped up so much because like this is really doing nothing for me, like I'm bored. I think in retrospect I probably should have given it two stars, but I think I was just like so happy to be reading again that I gave it three. I don't know, it was a really fast, really easy read and I will be giving LJ Shen a go in the future, but this one just kind of fell a bit flat for me. The next book I read in December was Bad Girls with Perfect Faces by Lynn Weingarten. This is a YA thriller and I rated it three stars. But I read this in one sitting. Like, it was so fun. Definitely not technically good, but like so fun that I literally read it in the space of an entire evening. I mean, of course I did. Look how big the font is and like the chapters are so short. It was just so easy. But basically this is a YA thriller about a girl who's in love with her guy best friend and her guy best friend gets back together with his really toxic ex-girlfriend who like cheated on him and is evil. So our female main character decides to catfish this new girlfriend of his to like prove to her guy best friend that she's like a cheater and she hasn't changed and then everything all gets a bit fucked up and the girl ends up dead and then chaos ensues from there it's all pretty insane but it was such a fun read i flew through it so fast technically it was just like really trashy to be honest like it really wasn't saying much i just loved all the plot twists our two main characters were pretty awful well actually you know what not the guy best friend like he was all right he was just a poor sick little puppy in love with an evil woman but our like main main character like catfishing this girl like i don't know like i know she was an awful human being but like shouldn't she just try and like use her words 
to her best friend and like explain it to him rather than coming up with this huge plot. Again, it was another book that was just incredibly far-fetched, but I kind of love that about trashy YA thrillers is that they just take these things, these situations and turn them into something so ridiculous. It honestly just felt like an episode of Riverdale. Not that I've ever watched Riverdale, but I feel like this book is like what Riverdale would be like. Also, can we just say this cover is disgusting. It's just some lipstick with some flies on it. Beside the point, it was a really fun book. I don't think I will ever pick it up again. And again, it's another one that I don't really remember that much about. When I was reading in December, I literally didn't think I would be making videos again. So I took like zero notes. I didn't think about anything critically. I just read for fun. So this wrap up might be a bit like, I might seem a little bit not all there, but yeah, genuinely, I just read all these books for fun. So I'm just gonna try my best to explain them and how I felt about them. But yeah, three stars, we'll probably never read this again. Actually, you know what, maybe I will. Maybe if I feel like eating some junk food or something, I'll like read this. But yeah, definitely recommend this if you're in a slump because oh boy, I have, I can't remember the last time I read a book in one sitting. Yes. The next book I read in December was The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, which I rated five out of five stars, like literally a new favorite. I love this so much. It made me realize that I'm an idiot for ever stopping reading fantasy. Like this has gotten me back into the fantasy genre and I could not be more thankful. This is an adult fantasy. We follow our main character, Rin, who is a war orphan. She has been brought up by these opium sellers in like a really small kind of poor district in this world and she's about to be married off to this random guy where she just have to like bear children and just live her life like keeping a house but she decides no she's going to study for this elite military academy and surprisingly she gets in and we follow her throughout her studies but while she's there she also discovers that she's a shaman so she can hone and use the power of gods and people don't really believe in shamanism they believe that shamans died out or that they just didn't exist in the first place but she's kind of like learning about this learning about her magic all that sort of stuff and then all of a sudden halfway through her year a war breaks out again in this city and now she's like fighting this war with like her classmates it's really hard to explain the plot because it is so complex and intense. It was kind of difficult for me to read because I haven't read fantasy in a long time and I'm diving into this like really complex adult fantasy, which is very, very political, but I just really, really loved it. And it's been so long and it was so refreshing to find a book like this. I really love that this book really did focus on the war itself rather than focusing on like the events leading up to the war or like the aftermath of war, which I find that fantasies so often do. So I really, really liked hearing about all those details and learning a lot. I also really liked our main character. I thought she was amazing and all the side characters as well. Like they're so memorable. Like there's never a character that you're like, oh, this person. Yeah, I forgot about them. Like everyone is literally so memorable. It's also surprisingly funny. I feel like people don't talk a lot about that, but like a lot of the characters have a lot of like good banter. It's really fun. And it's also just like really intense. I think if you are going to pick this up, look up it, look it up on Goodreads and just look at the trigger warnings because I think there's gore, there's obviously death, violence, war. There's some mentions of rape, which aren't on page in this book, but they are in the second book, which I'll go into later because I did read that book this month as well. I just can't recommend this book enough for a fantasy. If you are kind of tired of YA fant fantasy, then I definitely recommend picking this up because it really will make you like use your brain, your mind, and it's just so good. It's also entertaining. It's just incredible. So yeah, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm so bad at explaining books in this video, but you know, I didn't think I would come back to making videos. So yeah, regardless, pick this up and I know that there are some people that have done vlogs for the Poppy War out there or some reviews and stuff. I will try and find those people and link them down below because they would do a much better job of explaining this book than I have done. But yeah, definitely recommend like new favorite of all time. The next book I read in December was Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. This is a novel translated from Japanese and I don't even really know how to explain it. It's like a contemporary weird book. Goodreads says that it's literary fiction, so sure i guess it could be described as literary fiction it's only like 160 pages it's just so easy to read it's basically just about this woman who she just knows that she's different like she grew up feeling like she was different from everyone else and so she finds solace in her job working at a convenience store where she has worked for years and years she just finds that it's like the easiest way to live her life she finds so much comfort and like the neon lights and the sound of the till and all that stuff it's the author so beautifully describes that sort of stuff as well like 
it almost like I hate my hospitality job so much like I love being an actor so I hate when I have to like go back and pay the bills working serving tables but then like the way that the author described the monotonous like peaceful comfort of working in this convenience store I was like oh my god this reminds me of like working at my restaurants like it was just I don't know it just made me really happy about like the little things in life but basically our main character there's a new guy that starts at work and he's really awful and he like hates society and like working in some sort of capitalist society so they kind of like start not a relationship or a friendship by any means but like a companionship and he kind of like puts her world in a spin and makes her feel like she's not doing her job as a member of society it's just really really interesting and really good very much written like stream of consciousness and I just really liked it and definitely I would pick it up for a short book and I would definitely recommend it as a short book to read if you're just looking for something to like fly through and especially if you're thinking about branching out into stories from different countries because this one was like a super easy translation so yeah I really recommend it four stars for me I just felt like I, can't, I, I wasn't exactly left wanting more but it just didn't have that five star factor for me so that's why it's four stars I know that's a terrible explanation and I'm a terrible critical reader but yes four stars. The next book I read was another four star read for me and it is Starfish by Akemi Dawn Bowman. This is a YA book about a girl who loves painting but she doesn't get into the art school that she always dreamed of going to and she's also living with a really emotionally toxic abusive mother and she also reconnects with a childhood friend who she was in love with and they were like fully in love and they reconnect and he kind of helps her along this journey. Our main character Kiko also suffers from extreme social anxiety. I read this really fast. I just thought it was a really, really heart-wrenching, sad story about a girl who is uncomfortable in her own skin. She is half Japanese and she talks a lot about wanting to look like the other students at school and also the pressure and insecurities that her white mother has given her and making her believe that she's not beautiful or she's not good enough. It was also really hard watching our main character almost self-sabotage her relationship with this boy that she's in love with and has been in love with for ages due to her the own anxiety that her mother has given her. I thought this book was just like expertly written. The way that the author describes how Kiko feels when she's painting it was just excellent and it was just a really nice fast read. Again it's another book that I rated four stars just because it didn't I didn't connect to it in a way that I have connected to other five star reads but I think it's definitely a really really good YA contemporary and very hard hitting so if you're like me and you prefer your contemporaries to be more like sad and hard hitting than like light and fluffy then I de definitely recommend this. I also recommend watching Chloe's reading vlog where she read this because she described it much more eloquently than I have and I think it I think she connected to the book on a deeper level than I did as well so I think you should go check that vlog out if you want to hear more about this book um because again it's another book that I read not thinking I was ever going to talk about it ever again so yeah I mostly just read it for fun and flew through it and didn't even really think about it but yeah really good little contemporary love this i definitely want to read more by this author as well but also major trigger warnings for sexual assault because that is a big theme of this book and also emotional abuse from a parent and also anxiety if things like that can be triggering the next book i read in december was a huge disappointment i don't even know how to even speak about it i spoke a little bit about it with my mum because she read it as well and was also disappointed but it is louis and louise by julie cohen i actually had this book but it's gone missing and honestly there's no love lost with that. This book is an adult fiction which basically follows the same person. We follow parallel universes and in one universe this person was born as a woman and in another universe this person was born as a man. I feel like this book was really trying to be feminist but it just wasn't. Like I don't really understand the point and it was really awful because in one universe our like female character gets raped by one of her childhood friends and then in the male universe they have like the same encounter her and this childhood friend but the guy ends up killing himself in front of like our male main character so it was almost like by getting raped our female character saved this character's life it was just really weird and it was just almost just like does the like female to, like does the female timeline really have to include her getting raped like it just really didn't sit right with me because it's just like obviously like you know rape is like a huge thing and it's awful and like it happens to women all the time which is something that needs to change but it also I just don't personally want to see it in my fiction like 
because this character was born a woman, she gets raped. But because she was born a man, doesn't get raped. Like, I just didn't want to see those parallels. Like, I really didn't. And I didn't think it was necessary or feminist in any way possible. I was also just really bored. Like, it was basically about our main character coming back to the town where they grew up and reconnecting with people from their childhood and their mother is dying from cancer so it's also trying to like reconnect with their parent who has cancer and it was just so boring i was just suffering through it honestly like i know i rated it two stars maybe on retrospect i should have rated it one because i can't think of a single thing that i found enjoyable about it the first couple of chapters i was like oh yeah like this is gonna be really good like i'm really excited for this and then just like nothing happened that was interesting or even worth talking about apart from that mention that i just said because it really really rubbed me the wrong way and i agreed with and my mum agreed with me as well when we talked about it i was like like why did the female version have to get raped like it's just completely unnecessary and i personally just don't want to read it I don't want to read about it and I don't want to see it on the page. Like even on Goodreads, I'm looking at it and one of the genres is feminism and that's just not true because I didn't find this to be a feminist piece of work whatsoever. And I think a lot of people would agree with me. I'm just really disappointed by this book. Like I just don't even, I just, does, it doesn't need to exist. It wasn't doing anything special. It didn't, it didn't do anything special. It didn't have these like greater themes that I found to be particularly useful to my life and to enhancing my mind by reading so yeah definitely not don't pick this book up can't wait to talk about it further in my worst books of 2020 video just no 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 the next book i read in december was one day in december by josie silver i read this a few days leading up to christmas because i thought it would be a fun christmas read and it just wasn't i rated it two stars it's an adult romance that spans 10 years and basically it's about this woman who is on the bus and she falls in love at first sight with a man who is outside of the bus and they both connect lock eyes he tries to get onto the bus but he doesn't make it and then she spends like basically the entire year after that searching for this man and she finds him when her best friend introduces her to her new boyfriend and it's the guy from the bus so basically we just span 10 years of like the romance between our male main character and the best friend and then our also main character goes off and finds like this other man that she falls in love with and gets married to and it's very much just a story of like heartbreak and right person wrong time and all that sort of stuff i just found it again to be really boring and really dull i didn't really care about any of the romance and i was just really annoyed about how the characters went about things the act of miscommunication is one of my least favorite ways to progress a plot and to create a plot out of and that was a huge part of this story like i just didn't understand why our main character didn't from the get-go say to her friend oh my god that's the your boyfriend is the guy that i saw on the bus and i love you so much so i want you to explore this relationship but i'm just letting you know so you're not in the dark about this like how easy would that have been that would have solved so much conflict i also just hate cheating and our main characters obviously like cheated and it's just like, this doesn't make me root for them in their relationship. And I also just feel like these characters also wasted so much time by being in these relationships with people that they weren't in love with. And that was just really exhausting for me to read about. Honestly, like I was pretty impressed with myself because it was a pretty long book and I read it entirely in one day and I managed to actually get through it but it was difficult for me and you know there were some moments where i was just like oh yeah like this is fun like i found the beginning to be really fun but then there were just parts in the middle that were just like boring it kind of reminded me of the book one day by david nichols but like less charming and i really really love books that span over a long period of time so i guess maybe that is a reason that i liked it as well like i even think that this book would be a really really good movie so there were some, obviously some aspects that I liked, but you'd need to get the right actors to make these characters likable because the versions I had of them in my head were just not likable or charming whatsoever. Like maybe give me a film adaptation of this book with Dakota Johnson and Jack O'Connell and I'll watch and probably it'd be one of my favorite movies. But as book form, I just didn't really love it. So two stars. The next book I read in December was a Christmas romance novella and that is Mary Inkmas by Talia Hibbert. This was unfortunately another two star read. Maybe I just don't like Christmas books because all the Christmas books I've read I've given two stars like literally like The Afterlife of Holly Chase which I read last December two stars like I just don't even know what it is but this book was very disappointing for me because I really really love Talia Hibbert's writing and I love her romances but this 
wasn't it. It kind of felt like it was written by a high schooler or someone writing their very first book or maybe even Wattpad. Not that there's anything wrong with Wattpad writers. I'm sure that Wattpad writers are like really talented but like I've only ever read after from Wattpad and it kind of felt like that. Basically it's about a girl who works in a coffee shop and over Christmas she loses her job because she was sticking up for a homeless man and then her manager like fires her and so our other like male main character he's a regular at the coffee shop and he watches this happen so he hires her at his like tattoo studio where he's a tattoo artist. While they're working there they like fall in love but he's like really toxic and weirdly silent and he's really nice when he comes in to get his coffee like at the beginning but then he just like all of a sudden like switches. I just felt like obviously because it's a novella like it has to but I just felt like the book and the romance moved really fast and I didn't really see what the two characters saw in each other and I just didn't find them hot. I'm so sorry I know that's really shallow of me but like they're like not really our, ma our female main character but our male main character I just didn't find him attractive like I'm so sorry. Yeah I don't know and then there was just like this weird event where he like takes our female main character to his family Christmas and then his family is immediately like really really loving and she's part of the family and I don't know I just didn't buy it I just didn't buy the chemistry I just was really bored and I felt like this book was 400 pages when really it was like just over 100 because it's novella and it just took me too long to get through and yeah I don't know it's just disappointing because I really really love Talia's stories about the Brown sisters like get a life Chloe Brown and take a hint Danny Brown but this one was just like boring to me and just a bit disappointing and I didn't even feel like a Talia Hibbert story it didn't have any of her witty banter it didn't have her lovable characters so yeah not for me maybe it's the Christmas curse who knows but yeah, I don't really recommend this. Even for romance fans, I just like don't recommend it. The next book I read in December was The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang, which is the second book in the Poppy War series. I got this copy out from the library and I was shocked when I picked it up because it is a brick of a book. It's nearly 700 pages, but I managed to get through it pretty fast for me. Like for a big book like this, I managed to read it in like a week, which is pretty impressive for me. So... Obviously I don't want to tell you too much about the plot of this one because I don't want to have any spoilers for the poppy war but basically we are still in the depths of war. Rin is now like a commander, she creates some new allies, she meets up with some old friends. There were parts of it where I was like oh this might be a four star read like it's just really intense and really hard for me to get through and like some bits that were just like very complicated but at the end like the end like the last third really secured this book as five stars for me like it was just so interesting there were some of the best plot twists some of the best relationship developments Rin as a character has developed so much and I just feel like every book in this series is going to be five stars sorry I don't make the rules but yeah you already heard what I said about the poppy war so everything that I said about the poppy war is exactly the same for this absolutely loved it our new characters that were introduced as well were just so amazing so I love it so much and then the final book I read in December and the final book that I read for 2020 was another book that I read on my kindle and that was I was born for this by Alice Osman this is a YA contemporary and I rated it three out of five stars I think my expectations for this one was just so high because I have read Radio Silence by Alice Osman and that's easily a five star book for me but this one just was slightly it didn't have the same charm basically we follow two characters one is a member of a really really popular boy band pretty reminiscent to something like One Direction or BTS and then our other main character is a super fan of this band so our famous boy band is going to be doing a meet and greet and playing a show in London and our character travels to London to meet up with her internet friend and see this band. Oh, there's just so much that happens in this book it's like really hard to describe the plot but essentially our two main characters have this chance encounter. Our main character Angel who is obsessed with this band just has this experience that she never thought would be possible where she's creating this not so much a friendship but just some sort of relationship with this member of this boy band. There were so many huge plot twists and plot lines in this book that were just really really interesting. It's really really hard to describe all in one go without giving too much about the plot away. It was really nice to go into this book not knowing much about it so that's why I don't really want to explain the plot heaps for you guys but I think the way Alice Oseman crafted all these storylines to interweave with each other was really really good. I think Jimmy our boy band member the description of his anxiety 
was excellent. I think, I thought that representation was really good. As someone who has anxiety myself, definitely not to the same amount that Jimmy has, but for someone who does have a bit of anxiety myself, it was really nice to see that representation done so well. And it also was really nice to see a character whose entire life was consumed by her love for this boy band because it wasn't far off from how I felt when I first discovered BTS last year. I'm definitely much less like that now. Like I still love them so much and I'm still would consider myself like a fan, but I feel like I came to Angel's like, I don't know, character development moment in this book far earlier than she did like in my own life. And that's probably because I'm 24 and she's 18. But it was just nice to see like fandom culture like so accurately represented and also really interesting to see like the band's perspective and how they felt about it. It was just really good. For me it just like dragged on a little bit. It didn't have the same shine. There were some characters that I didn't really care about and some plot lines that I didn't really care about but ultimately a pretty good YA contemporary and a nice little easy fun read. Okay so those are all the books that I read in December. I'm really sorry that this wrap up isn't as cohesive as I would have liked or as my other wrap ups have been. It's just because I didn't read these with any intention to ever talk about them ever again but now that I am it's just it feels nice to give a hint to it and I've been reading other books since. Here's my books read in January slash currently reading pile and it's it's nice to like go into a book and actually like think about it and think about like the things that I could mention and what I'm gonna say but yeah so don't worry a better wrap up will be coming at the end of January but regardless I still hope you liked this video let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought and if you agreed with me if you disagreed with me and also keep an eye out for some more kind of typical like beginning of year end of year videos coming out in January and yeah again just thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in another video very soon bye but she said Cindy don't cry and I don't